wanted to enter the passage. My daughter said, Mommy, somebody is at your back. I said, Nobody is at my back. As I turned around like this to see who was at my back, a young man held my hand with God and with his face covered. As I said, Who are you? I turned the other way. The other, I saw another two of them. All of them were on gun. And they dragged me. I was shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So before my husband heard it, and jumped out, they have already driven out and carried me to an unknown place. Before I knew it, they have called a canoe, a flying boat. We entered flying boat to a long distance. I was shouting inside that place. I said, I never know you people. Oh. I've not done anything wrong to you people. I never know who sent you to me. So then, as we landed to the land over the other side, they took me, tied my face to the bush. Inside that forest, I could hear no voice of any human being. But I was all the time praying in my heart. On that uh, tent, on the 11th of it, I was to lead the women in the sub-region on prayer and fasting. I said, God, look at the program in my life and in the church. Look at here I am now. The following morning, when they break, I told them, say, you people have brought me to this place. When I have a program with God somewhere, they say, what type of program? I say, I have fasting and prayer with the women. They say, I should pray with them here. I said, okay. I, I turned the place to the church. I now began to pray with them. So after, about three of them showed interest in giving their life to Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then, I stayed there for about three days. They never connected my people. But I knew that period of my brethren kept on praying. Even the fasting and prayer day, they now prayed on that. And the whole church, in short, prayed over this matter. I was telling them over there that the church is praying. And I must leave this your arena. So, one of them said, don't worry. We know that you are a woman of God. We have seen when their, uh, their ogre came the following morning, saying, have you beaten this woman today? They said, no, nobody can touch her. She's a woman of God. Uh, so that God will not be angry with them. That they don't want God to be angry with them. So to cut the whole story short, on the 16th of the same month, that's after seven days I stayed there, they brought me out. I said, woman, go back to your people. And God brought me to my people. Praise the Praise Lord. Praise the Lord. Another testimony. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. I want to thank the Lord for the prophetic utterance of my father in the Lord. My name is uh, Brother Akindada from Oyo State, from Ibadan, Oyo State. On the 10th of September um, this year, I finished at the leaders' meeting and I was driving back home. So, and I normally hold on to my father in the Lord. I said, no loss, no lack, no limitation. And there's another prophetic utterance that he used, he used to tell us that I used to echo in my life, no fall, no falter, no failure. Now, when I drove from the, uh, from the secretariat, I, I, was, uh, I was in charge of the life team, and I used to sell. And I, when I finished, I finished all the sales, and I packed everything to my office. So I drove. I never knew that there's a trailer just on the road. I couldn't see the radar, the trailer. I just ran inside that trailer. And the car really each. So when, when, when they saw the, 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 that the, the trailer is on that, they said he's dead. Oh, chiku, oh, chiku. So they, they, the one of them said, go and bring beer and break it inside so that I uh, will say that he's drunk. So then there was a lawyer coming at my back. So that lawyer is Lawyer Kenla. He told them, if you, if you break the bottle of beer inside that car, you are going to end up your life in jail. So they are afraid. So they stood back. Then, the, lead, the other leaders, uh, the administrative manager in the Badon, and uh, some of our leaders, they were coming. So they met me on the floor. And uh, 
In fact, they said, what happened? I said, in fact, I'm, I'm dying. In fact, while I'm sitting, I was say, no loss, no lack, no limitation. No loss, no lack, no... I will not lose my life here. I will not lose my life here. And so they met me. One way or the other, I left... Uh, I, uh, uh, we left around 1 a.m. The police came. The lawyer went ahead. He carried the policeman. He carried the photographer to come and sh uh, 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 took, take the picture. So we, we took the car there. So on the second day, they said, I should go to the hospital. I should go to the hospital because there will be some internal injury. I said, no loss, no lack, no limitation. So when we got to the doctor, they said, ah, fatal accident. They said something was happen. They took me to the x-ray. They couldn't see anything. They took me to scan. They were pressing my, my mom. I said, I'm not pregnant. So, <laughs> and they were pushing it. I said, no loss, no lack, no limitation. They said, they were looking at me. I said, this man, hey, you just come out from accident. You need to see that. I said, I don't need to see that. My father has told me no loss, no lack, no limitation. So by the grace of God, then we, we came. I told my pastor. Uh, they told, I, the lawyer was firing me. We must carry this case to court because you are winning a jackpot. I said, no. I, I said, it's not the issue of jackpot. So he said, you must follow it because he wants money. That, and, and I told him that I went back to my pastor and my leader. They said, God has rescued your life. You know, there's no, you have to follow peace. There's no problem. Then I, I said, it's okay, sir. Then because then the people that have the, uh, the trailer, there was a particular inspector in the, uh, in the, in the station. And then he said, look, don't worry, I will collect the money to repair the car. The, the inspector is a deeper life inspector. He's a truthful person. He collected 52000 for me. He said, go and repair the car. And then after that, I, the, the car could not be repaired. Then I met my leaders. My leaders gave me some money. They said, we should try as much as possible to repair the car. To the glory of God, up till now, nothing happens to me. Amen. There was not even a scratch. Praise in my the body. Lord. And I want to tell uh, us that you know the, the prophetic statement that no loss, no lack, no limitation. I, I brought Amen. the car from me, but then I Amen. brought it to the I said, God, if you can help me to make the car enter into uh, IBTC, everything has finished. Bata, bata. That, the, that the, the devil has loved the battle. I want to declare to you that the car is here. Praise the Lord! The next person. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, my name is McCall Van Prosdy. I come from the United States. <laughs> It's my first chance to be here, so I would just like to give you a short testimony of what the Lord Jesus has done in my life in the past couple of years. About a year and a half ago, after a very chaotic lifestyle, a lot of involvement in the occult, sorcery, prostitution, drug use, alcoholism, I ended up nearly losing my life because I got involved with some people in the occult and I spent two to three days in a coma in the hospital. And after waking up, they took me to a mental institution. And it was there in the institution, there was a small radio in the corner of the room. And I really thank God for my life. And that day in the room, I heard one man of God preaching repentance. And I got down on my knees on the floor of that institution. And the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ condescended and he took me and he, he accepted me and I made him Lord of my life. And so many things have changed in my life since then. After, uh, after making Jesus Lord of my life, the devil was really battling with me and I was really confused. I didn't have, you know, anywhere to go and really worship God and I was going from place to place, and by the grace of God, in December of last year, I met some members of Deeper Life Bible Church in Rochester, Minnesota. Praise the Lord! And after I got to the church, by the grace of God, he's been breaking every yoke, 
He's been delivering me from every power of darkness, and he's been pouring out blessing upon blessing. I just want to give the glory to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Bora John Ojoni Kuaba. I'm from Nyanya region, FCC Abuja. I want to give this testimony to the glory of God. In the year 2004, I had uh, some, some younger, uh, young ones with me. My late elder brother died, and I carried the children to take care of the children. That's since uh, 1998 to 99. Then 2004, we are told, then my wife gave money to one of them to go to the market to go and buy Ugu leaf. One of them, that money became the source of transportation for her. She didn't come back home. And uh, we will be looking for her here and there. Here and we have moved all here and there, we couldn't get her. But this year, our Father and the Lord declared no lack, no loss, no limitation. <laughs> then I was coming from work, um, on second day to salary, uh, uh, small salary did. I was coming, I was sister Star Boss. My phone rang. I picked phone around Abasha Barak towards Nyanya. And I answered the phone. They said, uh, The person introduced herself that she is coming for a uh, Minister of Women Affairs, Lafia. And I say, he asked me, are you Abba John? I say, yes. Shall you work in NUC? I say, yes. Shall you from Kogi State? I say, yes. I say, what, what about it? Say, do you know any charity Abba? And I said, charity Abba, charity Abba. Did that charity Abba, I mean, is she looking for work in your office? He said, no. Don't you do any charity Abba? I keep on recalling, charity Abba. I say, charity Thompson Abba. I say, yes, yeah, she's my daughter. And I say, she's with us here now. Then immediately, I now make arrangement to travel there the following day. So the following day, I got there, and by the grace of God, they gave birth to me, and I came back home. And the last one, I was, uh, November this year, and my children were in the parlor, they were looking to do some things. Then the younger one was urinating directly on the socket that has light. And while it was urinating directly on the socket that, that there's light, immediately the socket went dead. Because I found a law said, no lack, no loss, no limitation. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are other testimony we cannot listen to now because of the special program for tonight. The man of God is coming now. So I will rise also that we can begin to pray. Let's thank God for what we have had. Praise the Lord. No lack. No loss, no limitation. It could be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're going to have a watch night service message together. In a few minutes, you are crossing over to the new year. The old is passing away. The new is coming. And before you pass on to the new year, the key. What did I say? The key. There are significant doors to be opened for the new year. And by the grace of God, we'll open the door and we'll move in in Jesus' name. Why don't you tell the Lord what to expect him from the Lord in the new year? And so have the key to open significant doors in your life. Doors in your family. Significant doors in the ministry. Jesus, they will pray. Our Father, I will thank you because you led us to this point. This year is about ending, passing over. 
You're bringing us to the new year. We're asking, O oh Lord, all the promises of God, the yes and amen in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Your goodness will enrich every life. Amen. Your power will sustain every life. Amen. We pray, Lord, in the new year, the dreams you have painted in our hearts, the ambition, passion, goal you have given us, and all that you want us to accomplish here on earth, they will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray you open our eyes of understanding that all the things that escaped, eluded us in the past will discover everything this the coming year. This coming year will be a year of blessing, a year of breakthrough, a year of multiplied fold of blessings in every life in Jesus' name. Give us the key Amen. that will open every door. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. In Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading verses 7, 8, 9, and 10 through to 13. And to the angel of the church, he fell very right. This thing says he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, he that openeth, and no devil shutteth, he that openeth, and no evil power shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but they do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have lodged thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, hour of trial which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast that thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I pray God will give us ears to hear. In verses 7 and 8, the Lord Jesus Christ introduced himself as the one that has the key, the key of David. And when he opens any door, no one will be able to shut that door. If he closes any door, shuts any door, no one will be able to open the door. The key that closes and opens significant doors. That's what we're talking about tonight. As we move on from this year, the key that closes and opens significant doors. There are doors to be closed. There are doors to be opened. The door to evil, God will close it. 
the door to yokes and curses, God will close that door. The door to bad luck and evil, the Lord will close the door permanently in every life in Jesus' name. The door to ministry, the door to opportunity, the door to the blessings of God, and the door to the fulfillment of the promises of God, the Lord will open those doors in Jesus' name. He has the key. He also gives us the key. We're looking at Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. And I say also to thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I'm sure you've read that before. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. The question is, what is that key? Many believers have wondered because it's not something you can see with your physical naked eyes. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. What kind of keys open the door? What kind of keys open the doors into the blessings of the kingdom? Some will say it is this or it is that or it is that other thing. But whatever makes prayers to be answered. Whatever opens the doors of heaven, whatever opens the windows of heaven, whatever shuts the mouths of the devil, whatever claims the promises of God, that will be the key. One key is faith. Faith is a mighty key. And as you develop your faith in this coming year from now, from the past till now, till the coming year, and you have the faith that's able to bring down every stronghold of the devil. Faith is the key. Forgiveness is the key. Because the Lord tells us that when you pray, whatsoever you desire, believe that you receive them. And ye shall have them. Then it says, but when ye stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, unforgiveness is a kind of key that locks the door of the blessings of God unto many people. Hatred, bitterness closes the door. Animosity, malice closes the door. And all those negative things, the bitterness in the heart. Because it says, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses also by of forgiveness and bitterness and hatred and envy and jealousy and all those antisocial attitudes. You close the door, but when there is love, a new commandment do I give you. That ye love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know, by this all the angels will know, by this seven and earth will know that she are my disciples. If ye have love one towards another, love is the key that opens the door. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Iniquity, I regard that in my heart. Dishonesty, I regard that in my heart. Evil, I regard that in my heart. Lost. Internal fornication. Internal adultery. You don't really do it, but you have the lost in the heart. If I regard adultery in my heart, fornication in my heart, iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It's a kind of negative key that locks the door and the Lord is not hearing. But when there is salvation, when there's a holy life, when there's sanctification, when your mind is clear, your life is clear, it says the effectual, fervent prayer of, tell me, a righteous man. Righteousness is the key that opens the door. The effectual righteous prayer, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's what the, what the Lord is telling us. The key of forgiveness. 
husband and wife forgiving each other. You know, sometimes you find that it may be the husband that says, I know fasting is a key. Fasting, if it adds forgiveness and love, that's the key. Fasting, if it adds that affection that ought to be in the family, that's the key. But fasting without forgiveness, fasting without love, fasting without honesty, fasting without transparency in the family, that kind of fasting will lock the door against you. You'll not be able to have the breakthrough. This coming year, there'll be a breakthrough. Because there'll be nothing in your heart, no adultery, no fornication, no bitterness, no hatred. Everything is holiness unto the Lord. In the arena of holiness, in the area of righteousness, of transparent honesty and holiness, doors will open. That's why this coming year is going to be a year of righteousness. A year of renewal, a year of holiness, a year of godliness, a year of transparent life. A year when we know the new creature comes out manifest, very clear to be seen. And whatever we decree, the Lord is going to fulfill it for us in Jesus' name. Let's consider three things before we pray. Number one, the pathway through the open doors. The pathway through the open doors. Number two, the perdition of offended, offensive deserters. There are people that desert. That is, they depart. They turn away. They desert the Lord. They forsake the Lord. They come to church. It's like they are offended at preaching. They are offended at prophecy. They are offended at the proclamation of the word. They are offended at the prophet of the Lord. It's like, you know, Ahab saying, I hate Micaiah. Don't say anything good about me. And if you come to the family of Ahab and you don't find anybody to hate, to hate a sinner is bad enough. To hate the poor man on the street is bad enough. To hate the pastor, to hate the preacher, to hate the prophet of God. The one that declares or thought, this is the way. What key therein? If that is the one you hate, you lock the door of blessing against yourself. The perdition of offended deserters, the perdition of offensive deserters. Point number three, the progress of obedient disciples. The progress of obedient disciples. Number one, the pathway through the open door. God has opened the door. And we're going to get in through that open door in Jesus' name. And you know, brothers and sisters, it's uh, good to keep sincere with the word, honest with the word, balanced in the word. Do you understand? That December 31st does not change the Bible. December 31st or January 1st does not change the interpretation of the Word of God. January 1st, May 1st, June 17th, July 23rd, December 31st, whatever the date, if there's hatred in your heart, that hatred will lock the door of blessing unto you. It doesn't matter how the preacher shouts. It doesn't matter how the preacher motivates. If there is unforgiveness, if there is hatred, if there is hidden sin, the door to blessing is locked. It is not the date of the month. It is not the hour of the month. It is not the date of the year that influences the interpretation of the word of God. The word of God remains the word of God. And if the door is going to be open, believe in the Lord. That shall be saved. That's true any time, any day. Stand on the promise of God by faith. That's true any day and any time. What then is the pathway? 
through that open door. Look at this in Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading to you from verse 27. Acts 14 verse 27. You know what it says there? Look at it. It says, And when they were come, and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith. That's it. Not the door of unbelief. The door of faith. He opens that door. And when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, the door to salvation is open. When you come to God with faith, with trust and confidence in the Lord, the door to sanctification is open. You come with faith unto the Lord. The door to healing is open. And when you come with faith for the Holy Ghost baptism, power from on high, the door into the power arena is come. When you come with faith for a miracle, faith is the key. And that faith opens the door that you say, because he is God. And because he changes not. Because his word is yes and amen. I trust him. And with that faith, if the faith is not cluttered by unforgiveness, if the faith is not cluttered or crushed or crowded or made ineffective by hatred, if the faith is pure and the faith is transparent and the faith does not have any sin, any iniquity, destroying its effect and power, it opens the door to any blessing of the Lord. In fact, this coming year, as you manifest this kind of faith, and you forgive everybody in your heart, no hatred, no bitterness, no sin, no adultery, no fornication, no lust at a woman, no lust at a man. As you come with very simple faith, transparent faith, doors will open automatically before you. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 7. In Acts chapter 12, verse 7, here is what it says And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and uh, a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. All your prison doors will open this coming year. You know, if you, if you just understand the covenant of the Lord, he deals with the people that deals in his nature. The nature of the Lord is love. And if you come with that nature of the Lord this year, that every drop of blood you have in your body speaks of loving God and loving your fellow man. And there is no hatred, there is no, and there is no jealousy, there is no envy, and there is no bitterness, there is no retaliation, there is no revenge. There is nothing in the corner of your heart that you, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. There is nothing like that. And you just come, doors will open automatically in your life this year in Jesus' name. You, you know, you better say amen because, you know, something is happening. You know, sometimes too, when you, if the hatred is still there, and you know, if you, you don't like, uh, you know, if you don't like me, I'm sorry for you because how, how can you live without liking me? You like me, you like holiness. You like me, you like sanctification. You like me, you like the rapture. Because whether you like it or not, it's, uh, you know, God is going to use me. I'll pull you out of everything that will tie you down. And, uh, you know, we, we, just, we just have to learn to live together because, you know, it is this holiness that will keep us together. And through this holiness, we'll fly when that time comes in Jesus' name. It says, Arise up quickly, and, and the chains fell off his hands. I see the chains falling away from your hand. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. So he, so he did, and, and, and he said unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and he wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of its own accord automatical opening of the door for you this year in Jesus name 
by the way, by the way, by the way, do you see that Peter was in the prison? It wasn't having night vigil. You know, night vigil is good. Night, you don't make yourself sun. Night vigil is wonderful. It wasn't fasting. Don't miss fasting is wonderful. But you know, if there's no night vigil, but your life is pure, your life is transparent. You think about it, you look at your heart. I don't have anything against James or John or Matthew or Luke. Paul even rebuked me the other day and he said, Why have you done that? We who are Jews, we know that we are not saved by the works of the law. You were eating with these Gentiles before and now these Jews came and you are pulling back. How dare you do that? And Paul was a younger convert than Peter. And Peter had nothing in his heart against Paul. And he was there in the prison on the following day. Herod was to take him and kill him. But heart pure, heart holy, heart righteous, no hatred, no bitterness, no secret um, desire to revenge on anything, even though there was no fasting by him. Night vigil by him. He just slept. An angel came from heaven. An angel will come for you. Yeah. Your doors will open. Yeah. Holiness is awesome. Sanctification is powerful. And if you understand what we are talking about, and you have this transparent holiness, and you have this faith, and you have this forgiveness, and you have this love, all the pathway will clear before you in this coming year in Jesus' name. And then it says that the door opened of his own accord. And they went out and they passed through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. Uh, do you see that this is all the way always open for the people of God? Here came the children of Israel by, it, by the Red Sea. And the Red Sea was there. And the Egyptians were coming from behind. And think about Moses. Moses. Moses was, you know, people say was a great man of power. Of course that is true. But have you noticed that, uh, you know, Moses had nothing against anybody. He went to the mountain top. That's later. And then while before he came back, Aaron had made the people gone astray. Of course, he rebuked Aaron. Aaron, why have you done this? And you know the people, my brother. You know how these people are. And that was it. And then he prayed, he prayed for Aaron. There was no bitterness in the heart. There was no forgiveness in the heart. His heart was clear. And if your heart is clear like that, a little rod in your hand will open the Red Sea. But it is, you know, when, you know, you're a preacher, you're a pastor, you're an overseer, you have something against your wife, you have something against uh, that one, you have bitterness against that, you have revenge against that, animosity against that one, and then you have the Red Sea. How will the Red Sea open? Where's the power? When there's so much unbelief and so much bitterness and so much unrighteousness and so much revenge and so much of, you know, all these uh, various things. But in the case of Moses, his mind was clear, the channel was clear. And when those Egyptians were coming, and then he looked at the Red Sea, and the Lord said, What are you praying to me? There's something in your hand, stretch it out, and the door will open. The door into the Red Sea opened, and everybody passed over. You know, I know that if I can just uh, be like Moses myself, that, you know, if, I, if you do something wrong, I rebuke you and that is all. And if you're still frowning, I say, have mercy on him, God. Is he frowning because I said, you know, you shouldn't do something. I read the Bible to him. I read the Bible to her. And then if I keep my mind clear, my heart clear, there's a rod in my hand. And then even though you are one of those sisters saying, why this and why that? I will still open the door for you through this Red Sea. You'll pass over in Jesus' name. Because I just believe that every month of the year, the revival we're having, the third week of the month, is going to take a new turn. Something is going to happen. And it will happen to you everywhere in Jesus' name. So we open the door through the Red Sea. In fact, it says that uh, if you have uh, this uh, mind, we're talking about the mind of Christ in you. 
that mind of humility and holiness and righteousness and purity and godliness that the doors of heaven the windows of heaven will open for every one of us in jesus name i come to deuteronomy chapter chapter 28 deuteronomy chapter 28 I'm reading here from verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee. I can't hear you. Seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God. And it says, and they walk in his ways, all the people of the earth shall see, and they shall call, they shall be called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Are you there? They shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers. The Lord shall, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. If you obey the commandment of the Lord, the way is open. And then you pass through, you pass through to the ministry. Of ministry, repentance, righteousness, salvation unto people around you. You pass on through that open door and you are ministering sanctification, holiness, godliness unto the people of God, preparing them for the rapture for the coming of the Lord. You are ministering to them through the open door that leads them into the power of the Holy Ghost. You are ministering to them and the door will be open to all the blessings of God upon their lives. Upon you, there will be the riches of the blessings of God. Upon your families, there will be the riches of the, of the blessings of God. Upon your local church, there will be abundant blessings in Jesus' name. Remember, the key that opens the door, the key of faith, the key of forgiveness, the key of love, the key of transparent holiness, the one that closes the gate, closes the door. Bitterness, hatred, revenge, trying to treat the other fellow, trying to provoke the other fellow, make him stumble, make him fall. That attitude closes the door against your life. I pray you're the wise. Number two, the perdition of offended, offensive, deserters. The setters are the people that leave, they depart, they depart, they go away from the Lord, they go away from the place the Lord has put them. In John chapter 17, John chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 12, John chapter 17, verse 12, I'm sure you remember, God doesn't walk by earthly calendar. It says, I am God, I change not. December 31st doesn't change God. And there's no magical thing about December 31st in the sight of God. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. True or false? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. True or false? True. December 31st, January 1st, that, that word is still true. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. True or false? True. December 31st, January 1st, the same thing. Still true. And they could not enter in because of unbelief. Whether it's December 31st or January 1st, that word of God is true. You want to make sure your life, that the life of the backslider, the life of the deserter is not associated with you. And you are not going to allow the date, the month of the day of the year to fool you. I see it on this particular day. Only this kind of word can be fulfilled. God remains the same. His word remains the same. You see the people that do not know the Lord. And they just have Christianity, Denominationalism. That's the problem with them. 
They say that December 25th gives liberty to drink, to get drunk, gets the liberty to have adultery, fornication. December 25th is the time when God appears to suspend all his word that sin does not matter. We know better that the word of God is still the word of God. The people that do not know God, they think that December 31st is such a special day that God suspends the fulfillment of his word. That it doesn't matter, you live in sin, December 31st is special. And it's a day for them of prophecy. That it will be well for the drunkard, it will be well for the sinner, it will be well for the idol worshipper, it will be well for the people that love the world and the things that are in the world. But it's not true. The word of God remains the same. The perdition offensive people, deserters, offended deserters. I'm looking at John chapter 17. John 17, verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost, but who now? The son of perdition. What's his name? Jesus Iscariot. He was a deserter. He deserted the Lord. He left the Lord. He betrayed the Lord. And the day she did that did not matter. The word of God is the word of God. And so the perdition of that lost soul. Second, Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. In Second Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that as when I was with you, yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and light wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. I pray you will not believe a lie. I said, I pray you will not believe a lie. This coming year, be very slow in believing people. That's why those who talk, talk and talk. The people that trade in lies. Some of them are in church. They trade in lies. And they can set you up, get you going, get you moving, get you taking decisions. By lying. And because of the age of the, of the telephone, mobile telephone, text, email, and all these things that pass around, a lot of lies, lies about themselves, lies about you, lies about your neighbor, lies about dreams. Lies about revelation. Lies about they died, they saw something, they came back, and lies all over. Beware. Luke chapter 17 from verse 28. 
Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, he drank fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which shall be upon the house top and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him not likewise return. We're going to read verse 32 to everybody. One, two, go. Once again. For the last time. Remember Lot's wife. The deserter. She looked back. Not that she even turned back. She looked back. Not that she went back. She looked back. This is not the year to play with worldliness. This is not the year to dress like the people of Sodom. This is not the year to put on Babylonish garment. This is not the year to have all those attachments, all those paintings of the Egyptians, of the Assyrians. This is not the year to look back into the world the way we used to dress in the world, the cosmetics of the world, the paintings of the palming of the world, the burning and all the tattoos of the world. This is not the year. This is the year of preparation for the Lord, for the coming of the Lord. The people that desert, that go back from the Lord, remember Lord's wife, the terrible thing. I pray that the spirit of the age, the wind of the age, the worldliness of the age will not catch up on you and you will not catch up with it in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 4. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. It says, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Demons has forsaken me. When we talk of worldliness, it's not only among women. There are people that sob over the internet and spend hours. And while you are maybe looking for something legitimate, something illegitimate will pop up by itself. And then you follow through and keep on chasing those illegitimate pictures and objects and everything before you know what you're looking back. I hope nobody is looking over my shoulders. Look at the pictures I'm looking at. I hope nobody is looking over my shoulders to see all the pornography that all the things popping up is leading you into. Well, whether you someone is looking over your shoulders or not, God is looking at you. Your mind is defiled. Your soul is defiled. You begin to daydream. And then all the things you wouldn't attempt to do ordinarily. Those things now will just clutter your mind. You want to make sure that this new year you are not like, you know, that demons that has now forsaken me having loved this present world. And all this uh, chit chat, you know, all this, uh, you know, they say it's um, Facebook or whatever. And sometimes you have all this. It's almost even dangerous now for people who are careless to use telephone. Because, you know, somebody is, you know, sending text to your phone from the very center where you, the service provider. And it's saying that if, you, if you're feeling lonely, you're feeling this and that, uh, you know, just text uh, L-O-V-E, love, to this uh, number 3456. And if you text it then another person on the other side also feeling lonely, you know, will be talking to you. And then before you know what, you have a Delilah on the lap or something or something on the lap of Delilah through the telephone and through the text. That's why you want to watch yourself and take care of yourself so that you don't fall away at this because there is no blessing for those deserters, for the people that have fallen internally and they're just pretending as if they were there. By the grace of God, the reality is you'll be there in Jesus' name. 
when we say holiness your holiness will be real it should not be a holiness that the service providers of you know whatever uh, telephone has taken away from you we're doing everything we can in the church and we're preaching the word of god that without holiness no man shall see the lord and all these things uh, you know the ipad and the telephone and you know the plant system you have and the internet whatever you have and you know, the desktop you have everything is taking away holiness from you and it's taking the life of the believer away from you and even though you still go to church and you still dress like you know the people dress you're backsliding your heart already all that this year will stop in jesus name because there will be the perdition, there will be the pain, there will be the peril, there will be the punishment for those who desert and they go away from the Lord. James chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 4. James chapter 4. We're looking at verse 4. James 4. Reading from verse 4. I pray the Lord will make us wake up in Jesus' name. You've gone back home. James chapter 4, read now from verse 4. It says in verse 4, ye adulterers, are you not surprised this kind of language is talking to a church, talking to believers, talking to those who are supposed to have known the way of the Lord. It says ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? December 31st, January 1st, whatever the date, friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, any day of the year will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I pray you will not be an enemy of God. Point number three, the progress of obedient disciples. That's the kind of disciple, the only kind that God knows. Those who are stubborn, those who are rebellious, those who are carnal, those who are self-centered, you cannot be self-centered and remain a disciple. Opinionated and remain a disciple. Hard-hearted, stiff-necked and remain a disciple. The only kind of disciple Jesus has they are the people, they have been born again, they have surrendered, given their lives totally unto the Lord. They are not men full of themselves, women full of themselves. They are people who love the Lord, they are people who love the word of the Lord. They are people who are willing to subject, subdue, they are willing to immerse their will into the will of the Lord. Disciples. And it says, if ye continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. The progress of obedient disciples. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 19. I'm reading here from verse 5 and verse 6. Exodus 19 verse 5. Now therefore, if ye, if ye will obey my voice indeed, I keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. That's the promise of the Lord to obedient, obedient disciples. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, reading from verse 26 and verse 27, Behold, I said before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. Deuteronomy chapter 28, reading from verses 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall diligently hearken, Unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord shall set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. If we hearken, if we obey, you know, if uh, you are disobedient and then you hear these promises and you are trying to claim it 
It's like claiming a letter that has not been written to you. The letter is written to those who keep to the word of God, who obey the word of God, who observe the word of God to do. It says in verse 2, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If this is a condition, thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Job chapter 36, the progress of obedient disciples. The progress of obedient disciples. Job chapter 36, we're reading from verse 10. Job 36, reading from verse 10. Yeah, it tells us, he opens also their ear unto discipline and commanded that they return from iniquity if they obey obey to return from iniquity obey to return from backsliding obey to return from righteousness if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures you missed an amen over there now verse 12 but if they obey not have you, have you discovered how some preachers will reach up to verse 11 they know that verse 12 is there but they never read verse 12 every time they read verse 11 if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures they stop right there they are thinking if i don't read it god will not hear it if i don't read it god will not remember it if i don't read it god will not fulfill it it's only what i read god will remember and fulfill how ignorant we are you don't believe in god the kind of God you believe is the God of your making. He is the author of the scriptures. Whether you read it or not, it's there. And the Lord acts according to his word. Verse 12, if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword. And they shall die without knowledge. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his, his owner, and the ass his master's creep. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider a sinful nation. Any nation will come from, any nation will come from, either from the west or here from the tropics. Sinful nation. See everything happening. You read in your newspapers. And we see all the things happening everywhere. The degradation and defilement is so terrible. Sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors. They are forsaking the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your land, strangers devour each in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughters of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard as the lodge in a garden of cucumbers. 
as a besieged city, except the Lord of hosts has left us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, we should have been like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye Sodom, ye rulers of Sodom, and give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs of the eagles. When you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to tread my cause. Bring no more vain oblation incense. It's an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbath, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are a trouble unto me. I'm weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear, because your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your iniquity, of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Seek judgment and relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless and plead for the widows. Come now, after you've done that, you know the Lord wants us to clean up, clean up our lives. He wants us to repent of sin. He wants us to repent of anything that is not appropriate, not proper, not holy, not righteous, not saintly, not according to his nature. He says, let you do well and get all those things off your life. Then he says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 19, if he be willing and tell me, I want to hear you, obedient. I've never heard of a new creature who is not obedient. I've never heard of a sick soul who is not obedient. I've never heard of a really sanctified soul that is not obedient. I've only heard of religious people, religious deceivers, religious hypocrites, religious people lie. That, you know, they are there. But they are not obedient. But when you are born again, when you are a new creature, when you are saved, and when you go forward again, after consecrating yourself all over again, and you lay everything on the altar with entire consecration, and the Lord sanctifies you instantaneously, and it purifies your heart. It takes away that old self, that stony heart. And then it gives you a heart of flesh. Obedience will come. And if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20, what other people are born? We're going to read it now. Verse 20, are you there? I said, are you there? But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord as spoken age. The Lord is telling us as to move on to this a new year. It should be a year of uh, obedience in Jesus' name. And uh, you know, he said uh, now, this is, you are not hearing the old voice now, this is a new voice. And this is a new passion. It's like I should begin now, introduction, point one, point two, and point three. This year is a year of preaching. It's a year of power. It's a year of prayer. It's a year of declaration in Jesus' name. And all the power in me, I pass on to you. The authority here, I pass it on to you. As I go from day to day and from strength to strength, you will go from day to day and strength to strength in Jesus' name. We are able to go up and we are taking this land. And we're taking this country and the power to obey and the power to pray and the power to possess. You have it in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to read uh, this verse in this uh, new year now. This is mine. I said this is mine. I said this is mine. What is mine is yours. What is yours is mine. This is yours in Jesus' name. 
We're looking at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 22. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. That's the word for the new year. I'll be a doer of the word. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own self. For if a man be a hearer of the word, anyone be a hearer of the word and not a doer. And he, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself. And he goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man, I am that man. This man, I am that man. And this woman shall be blessed in his deed. Blessed in his deed. Are the blessed people there? Are they there? What are they? What are they? Stand on your feet. Have the victory of the new year. The power of the new year. Have the prosperity of the new year. The progress of the new year. The Lord has brought you now into the new year. Praise the Lord for that. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. He brought you into this new year. It's going to be a year of breakthrough. It's going to be a year of blessing. It's going to be a year of prosperity. It's going to be a year of obedience, of holiness, of righteousness, of sanctification, of revival. And because of that obedience, and because of that faithfulness, and because of that loyalty to the Lord, it's going to be a year of progress in your life. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. The key that opens the door is the key of faith. Is the key of forgiveness, is the key of love, is the key of affection, is the key of transparent holiness, the key that opens the door in this new year. Old calamity is gone, old cause is gone, old yokes broken. Old bad luck gone. That's if the bitterness of the old year does not follow you to the new year. That's if the defilement of the old year does not follow you to the new year. That's if the old animosity, old hatred, old malice of the old year does not follow you to the new year. That's if the old corruption, old defilement of the old year, old lies, old cover up of the old year does not follow you to the new year. A year of transparency, a year of righteousness, a year of holiness, a year of purity, a year of following after the Lord, step by step, step by step, a year of sincerity, a year of single-mindedness, following after the Lord, a year when you can trust your life, will your life, into the hands of the Lord. And there's no reservation. No backsliding. No deserting the Lord. You are following closely. You are following with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Following the word of the Lord. Following the will of the Lord. What a year this will be. Why don't you tell the Lord... And there's still something like, you know, the remains of backsliding. And all those uh, remains of uh, the old self-life, if it's still there, you want to lay everything down at the foot of the cross. So at this year, remember there's no magic about the new year. No magic about the new year. The word of the Lord is still the word of the Lord in the new year. And the conditions are still there. If he will obey my voice indeed, 
if you will obey my voice indeed that was bring the blessing in the new year holiness that's what brings the blessing in the new year righteousness transparency tell the lord new life in the new year new faithfulness in the new year new consecration in the new year total abandonment into the hands of the lord in the new year total submission unto the lord in the new year that's what brings the blessing that's what sustains the blessing In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, I believe that you have brought yourself to the point of obedience to the Lord. Amen. I believe that if there was anything wrong in the old year, you have already mentioned that to the Lord. I have told the Lord to forgive and to cleanse you with the blood of the Lamb. And if you have done that, I believe it's done in Jesus' name. And that you're not going to drag into the new year the old insincerity and the old dishonesty and the old lifestyle and the old self-centeredness and the old stubbornness and the old disobedience but this year real salvation will be in demonstration in jesus name and you do that this first day of the year remember once again the fish does not struggle in swimming Neither does the bird struggle in flying. If you're really a new creature, the new life will not be a struggle. You love this new life. Yeah. And you live the new life with pleasure, with delight in this new year in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray as you stand, you will not fall. Yeah. You will not fall into sin. Yeah. You will not fall into sickness. Yeah. You will not fall into poverty. Yeah you will not fall into shame every shameful thing that followed you in the past years everything will be totally removed in jesus name and i pray that the promises of god you are standing on those promises of god they will be yes and amen in your life as you claim the promise for every day and the promise for every situation and the promise in every part of the word of god those promises of the yes and amen in your life and you will stand by faith every time stand with confidence every time stand with a strong backbone every time in jesus name as your years are so will be your strength as your day so will be your progress and you'll move on from glory to glory and from faith to faith and you'll move on from power to power in jesus name and everything you claim in the word of god the lord will fulfill and so follow this new year in obedience in holiness in righteousness the blessings of god will abide upon your life Amen. from the beginning of this year until the very end of the year no lack Amen. no loss Amen. no limitation Amen. raise up your hand for the blessing of the new day the new month and the new year father in the name of jesus Amen. 
We thank you because of what we have gotten us through. We thank you because of what we have experienced. All the past year, the great miracles and the great testimonies were part from your people. We pray that this year will be a time and a year of multiplied testimonies in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you renew the life, the nature, the heart, the soul, the personality of everyone in this new year in Jesus' name. Righteousness will be our watchword. Holiness will be our watchword. Sanctification will be our watchword. Love will be our watchword. Forgiveness will be our watchword. And following after the Lord will heartily like Enoch, like, like um, Caleb, like Joshua, like all those worthy support. That will be our watchword in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you break every yoke. Destroy every work of the devil. I will pray that you open the door into greater ministry. Open the door into supernatural ministry. Open the door into all kinds of blessings for your people in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, this year automatically doors will open by themselves. I will pray, Lord, the blessings will be abundant in every life in Jesus' name. We are praying that every day of this new year will seed it with the blood of Jesus. Blessing on every brother. Blessing on every sister. Blessing on their children. Blessing on the work of their hand. Blessing on everything they touch. And blessing on the ministry in Jesus' name. Touch the body, the soul, the heart, the spirit of everyone here, Lord. And we pray that all those who are listening, your blessing will pass on to everyone. And we pray, you roll all the curses and all the yokes and all the plagues and all the sicknesses, all the bad luck of the passing year. You roll everything away from everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, your goodness will never fail in our lives. Prosperity will never fail in our lives. This year we declare once again, it will be well with your people. And lead us to better land and good things in this new year. In Jesus' name. Fulfill your good word in the life of everyone. We pray that this will be a happy new year for everybody. Prosperous new year for everybody. Victorious new year for everybody. Triumphant new year for everybody. In Jesus' name. From glory to glory. From joy to joy. From faith unto faith, and from one level of blessing to another level of blessing, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it's not. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said...